Whoa, what's love got to do, got to do with it? What's love but a secondhand emotion? What's love got to do, got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? What's up, y'all? This is Ty, and I know y'all saying, Ty, why are you over here butchering Tina Turner's song, What's Love Got To Do With It? But well, let me tell you why. It's on my mind because I just got through watching a documentary on HBO. Now, listen, I was minding my business, right? Just flicking, flicking, flicking through. And I go on HBO um, Max, and I see this in the box. You know how they have the menu, and I'm like, what's this? I'm clicking to see what I want to watch. It says Tina. I said, wait, Tina? So I click on it. There's a new documentary on the legendary, iconic queen of rock, Miss Tina Turner. Now, before I get into that, I want to say I did my research, right? This documentary was directed by Don Lindsay and TJ Martin, and it chronicles the life and times of Miss Tina Turner and her music career and all of that, and it's, just, it's pretty good. Now, the thing is, what's great is I learned in my research that Right now, it is the most viewed documentary on HBO Max. They said that it has 1.1 million views so far because people love Miss Tina Turner. Now, we all know Tina's story because there's been books written. Uh, there's been the movie, What's Love Got to Do With It, starring Angela Bassett. And there was the musical, the Broadway musical, 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 the Broadway musical, Tina, which um, was on, played in London and it played in New York. So we know that. But you know what? This documentary is like icing on the cake, sort of like her farewell to us. Like, you know, I'm this is I'm going to give you one. I'm going to tell my story one more time. Fill in some of the blanks that maybe the film didn't do. And if you didn't read the book, you didn't get it. Because this documentary has her, in her own words, telling her story. She's sitting down at her home. She's like 80, 81, something like that. Sitting at, a, at her home in Switzerland with her husband. And you know, there's other people telling the story as well. But it's in Tina's own words. We've seen her sitting down telling a story. We have Oprah Winfrey, Angela Bassett, one of um, Tina's longtime friends and assistants, all telling the story, people who interviewed her and things like that. So it's given, that's why I said it's the icing on the cake, because we're getting a little bit more details here, a little bit more details, which is great. Now, it's a collection of good archive footage. We get to see Tina as a teenager. We get to see her when she first, how she got to meet Ike and how she became a part of the Ike and Tina Turner review and how she got her name, of course, Ike named her. And what I liked about this, what I didn't know, I got to see behind the scenes of her with her children. I, didn't, you, I never really knew about her children except for in the movie. I didn't know all that, you know, all that. One of her children, one of her sons here is in the documentary. Um, unfortunately, he passed away, I believe, in... A few years ago, maybe 2018 or something like that. But it was just really interesting to see that and to see her take on things and how she viewed things. And, you know, I love music and I love musicians and I love finding out how songs came about and how people's careers got started and things that we love, how they first started. So we know we're not going to go. We know she was abused by Ike Turner, manipulated. She started off. She was a naive country girl her own words and she didn't know anything about show business but she was loyal to him and she remained loyal to him and she was there despite him abusing her mistreating her she always wanted to be loyal to him and um make sure that she could help him get a hit now he's a very talented man a writer and a producer he was a very talented writer and producer unfortunately his demons got the best of him and he'll, he's going down in history as the man who beat Tina Turner. That's sad, but that's that's his legacy now because of what he did. You know, unfortunately, but that's his legacy. It was horrible what he did. And um, she also talked about how, which surprised me. Well, not really surprised, but she talked about how 
she eventually, she did not want to always discuss Ike. Even after she got her success, when she broke away from Ike Turner and had her solo career, which was a mega success in the 80s, she always found that the journalists always brought Ike up and she hated that and she wanted, that's why she wrote her book. She figured I write my book, tell it all and I'll be able to get away from it. But no, she couldn't get away from it because I think that's what made the fans love her more and draw to her knowing that she survived such a tragic thing as this abuse, such a terrible thing. And she became like a hero to many and uh, many women that were abused and people that were in bad situations could relate to her because she was a, she's the story of triumph and reinventing yourself and starting over. So while I do understand, I understand her point where she said she at first she didn't really want to discuss that she wanted that behind her. But I see how it's kind of it's her life. It's a part of her. And she had to learn to deal with that. And she took something negative and tragic and turned it into something awesome. I mean, look at this woman's career. You're talking about a woman who went through abuse in the 60s while have, being a successful uh, act in the 60s. And then by the 80s, she's like 45. Um, she went through in the 70s doing the Vegas thing and the TV shows. But she was pretty much um, a 60s act. And so the music industry had changed now. And, and, you know, it's a young people's game. Not saying that 45 is old, because it's not. But in the music industry's eyes, that's old because, you know, they, they want the young whoever snapping at the time. And it was like, what are we going to do with this woman who's 45 years old, who used to sing the soul music? Now she's talking about she wants to sing rock. She's a black woman. It's never been done when you've had a black woman singing rock music and selling out stadiums because this was her goal. This is what she wanted to do. And they were like, that hasn't been done. She did have Roger Davis, Davies, I believe his name is, who's her manager, who believed in her. But unfortunately, there were some people who did not believe in her. Some people at Capitol Records that didn't believe in her, which was crazy. And some of the things that they said about her, which when you check out the documentary, you'll see they didn't believe in her. It was ridiculous. And I'm loving that, you know, he fought. We're going to give her a chance. We're going to do this. And I like how we get to see how the Private Dancer album came to be and how certain songs were formed and how she didn't like what's Love Got to Do It at first. And then she made it her own. And I really, I love stories like that because it really showed us, it's really inspirational. It shows you that you can keep going if you believe in something, even when people are doubting you, that you can go ahead and do it anyway. And we know she went on to sell what, 20 million records, 20 million copies of that Private Dance album. She's selling out football stadiums. She's a rock legend. And I really totally enjoyed this documentary. Totally, totally. And I'm loving all these documentaries because what was it? I, last week, we had the Aretha Franklin uh, miniseries. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Genius. That was great. That was good. I enjoyed that. And I enjoyed this as well. And like I said... She um, shared her personal life. We got to hear from her husband. We got to hear from how she feels now. And it was like Tina telling us, okay, this is it. This is what I'm giving you with this documentary. There'll be no more. You've gotten music out of me. You have books out of me. Y'all did a movie on my life. You did the Broadway play. Now I'm giving you this documentary as my one love you to the fans. But goodbye. I'm going to go Go home in Switzerland, enjoy my golden years. She's, what, 81, something like that. I'm going to enjoy my golden years out of the spotlight now. And I thought it was a wonderful, wonderful documentary. I really enjoyed it. I love Tina Turner, always did. What's that? We don't need another hit. That was my, let me tell you. When Mad Max came out, I was a little boy. I, lo I loved me some Tina Turner. I loved her legs on that cover. We had that album cover with her legs, them legs. I thought she was so hot. Then when she did that uh, Mad Max movie, oh, I remember I was like, oh, that's Tina Turner. And that, we don't need another hero. That's, that's the jam right there. So it was just awesome seeing all of this. I really enjoyed it. I don't want to ramble anymore. That's all I got for now. Um, tell me your thoughts. Did you see the documentary? Did you enjoy it? If not, check it out. I think you'll like it. And do me a favor. 
You see that button down here somewhere? Won't you hit the subscribe button? Won't you hit the like button? And, you know, have a blessed day, you know? So thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. You all be blessed.